seated. God tells us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, he says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them, and then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Joseph and Paula Jones, you are asked to renew your marriage vows today on this special occasion of your wedding anniversary. Therefore, in the presence of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, your family and all of these witnesses, your friends, we are pleased to honor your request. We know that the commitment you made to each other at your wedding has been an enduring one. No doubt you have renewed it in your heart many times in the years together. Joseph and Paula have lived together in marriage in the name of Christ for the past seven years. Now I'd like to ask my special helper to come forward and to read a verse for us. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. And they, the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abby. Very good. Together as one flesh, they have faced many challenges over the years. And they have been tested in the depth of their love and the bonds that unite them to one another. Difficult as these times may have been, they have never faced them alone. By faith, they know that their marriage has been and will continue to be, even in their weaknesses, a participation by grace in the divine life of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In marriage, as in all things, Jesus is in us and we are in him. Just as he loved us and gave himself for us, so we are urged to love our spouses. In Jesus, we are free to love without condition, to forgive without bearing a grudge, and to be faithful in the face of adversity. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not, not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. In Jesus, we can say to our spouse, I have freely chosen never to be myself without you. And I give my life and all that I am to you. In the book of Revelation, the Apostle John had a vision of that day when all humanity will see at last what we have always been as the children of the Father in his Son, Jesus Christ. And that will always be. The Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. But you know what? He doesn't tell the wives to submit to their husbands unless they are being like Christ. He says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loves the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing of water through the word and to present to her himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless 
In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Because marriage is a divine institution, and we are asking the Father to renew your union together as husband and wife through his Son, Jesus Christ, and in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, it is fitting that each of you should faithfully promise to continue to be in the marriage covenant. So Joseph, Paula has given her life and her love to you. Do you promise as her faithful husband in the presence of God to continue to live together with her in the holy estate of marriage, to love her, cheer her, build her up, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and give yourself only to her so long as you both shall live. Paula, Joseph has given you his life and his love. Do you promise as his faithful wife in the presence of God to continue to live together with him in the holy estate of marriage, to love him, cheer him, build him up, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and give yourself only to him as long as you both shall live. Since it is your desire to renew your marriage covenant today, please join hands and repeat after me. Joe, please repeat after me first. I, Joseph Jones, I, Joseph Jones promise to continue to take you, Paula, to be my wife, to have in the whole, from this day forward, in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part. Now, Paula, if you repeat after me, I, Paula Jones, promise to continue to take you, Joseph, to be my husband, to have and to hold, from this day forward, in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, until death do us part. At this time, I'd like to ask my wife, Julie, to come forward and read what the Apostle Paul tells the church in Philippi. That's all good. Philippians 2, 1 through 5. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, Consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should not look should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Christ. Now typically in the wedding ceremony at this point we would exchange rings. But Paula and Joe have never had rings. And the reason is, is because Paul is allergic to almost every metal. And she breaks out. So they have held this bond without having the rings. But on this special occasion, they did something kind of unique. <laughs> In fact, since I have them up here, they can't do much about it. I'll tell you a little story. Because what they ended up doing is having some symbols tattooed on their ring fingers. And Laszlo, who normally attends our morning service, is the one who did it. And I was asked to come and join them. Of course, they were thrilled to get pictures of me in a tattoo parlor and wanted to make sure that they got me out in front of the sign and all. But it was, it was great because my faith was renewed in why I don't have tattoos. I watched Joe get a tattoo about the size of what? A lady mug? And this guy was climbing out of his skin. He was, his legs were kicking. He was crying. And I thought, that's exactly why I don't get a tattoo. 
And then Paula steps up, and Paula is just chit-chatting. It's like nothing is happening. And she says, compared to having kids, this is nothing. And Joe said, that's why the wives have kids. If the men had kids, we wouldn't have any population at all. So they had some symbols, and the symbols uh, represent love and harmony, which they have found to be vital in their marriage. So you can, they, you can ask to see those a little bit later. You could both join hands, please. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for Joseph and Paul. As they renew their marriage vows with each other, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will continue to bless their union and their children. Defend them from evil. Lead them into the peace of your spirit. Bless them in their companionship, in their sleeping, and in their waking, in their love and their joys, and in their sorrows. Bless them in the mutual love that it will never cease. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Consider yourselves remarried. <laughs> you may kiss your bride. Woo! It is my honor and privilege to present to you again Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Jones. Let's party! There's cake in there and drinks, and uh, there's bird seat back here, but we're going to do that when they leave. So when you guys are ready to leave, let us know, and maybe a little earlier, you may have to do it, go out and then come back in, because I know a lot of people want to participate. We're going to get make a line out in the grass, and they're going to run through it. We're going to pelt them with bird seeds. Nicely. Nicely. All right?